Good morning. Wow, uh, I hope we can have a little more of that for our postlude, please. That was awesome. Welcome to Maple Grove Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Christine Childs. Glad to have you here in person for worship today. Welcome guests and visitors with us also, uh, those of you present and those of you who are online. So glad to have you for worship this morning. Hey, it's, it's kind of a, a guest morning anyway for all you guests. Um, we've got a Reverend Dr. Peter Samuelson. Now, we have um, had the pleasure of having him preach before. Um, he, but due to pandemic reasons, he has recorded his message. So we're going to try something a little different. Um, we're going to watch it on our multimedia screen and give us some feedback online. We've tested this, but we want to hear if you can hear well enough and see well enough. Uh, so we're going to try that out today. And of course, it's always a blessing uh, to hear a message from Reverend Dr. Peter Samuelson, a friend of our congregation. We also have a guest uh, pianist filling in today for Mark Brown, Kevin Gastonway. Let's welcome Kevin. already tell it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, Christy Janigo is our assisting minister this weekend while Pastor um, Nancy and enjoys a little extra rest and time off and so we're glad to have Christy and I'm going to ask her to come up right now. She has also stepped in as our new outreach chairperson and she's going to keep us busy during Lent. My name is Christy Janigo, and I'm the newly elected outreach chair, and I'm here to bring you an update on our activities. We had our Valentine's themed Share the Love Supply Drive in partnership with Thrivent and the Maple Grove Giving Connection, a new organization in our area aiming to serve people experiencing homelessness. Our supply drive kicked off on January 26th, and on Valentine's Day, 11 people showed up to pack and organize the donations. We had 18 unique supply donors, and we collected about $1,000 worth of supplies. This includes items purchased with a $250 Thrivent Action Grant, secured by Jill Dean. Thrivent invites their customers to apply for two grants annually to fulfill a need within the community. And this grant really elevated what we could buy and complemented supplies bought by the larger group. In total, we collected just under 130 pounds of supplies, packed into 25 assorted food bags, 24 hygiene bags, and 23 personal item bags, which included some cold weather and safety items such as masks, socks, hand warmers, and hand sanitizers. Check out MGLC's Facebook page for a photo montage from Share the Love. Our Back to the Basics supply drive for cross services kicked off on Ash Wednesday. The drive is prioritizing items Cross has identified as their greatest needs. Each week, we offer a theme for supplies that make up the acronym BASICS. Um, and you can see where we were a little creative with that. So we started by collecting baby supplies uh, this week, diapers, wipes, formula, ointment, and baby food. Um, and we received many supplies, so thank you so much for those who gave. And starting tomorrow through February 28th, we are collecting all paper products, so you can see uh, the creativeness come in there with the acronym. Um, so for all paper products, uh, things like paper towels, Kleenex, toilet paper. Um, so follow our Facebook page and e-newsletter for the weekly themes. Of course, you don't have to give uh, related to the weekly themes. Um, you can give just anything you want, uh, and our cross bin will be positioned outside under the main entry portico and you can drop off items contact-free at any time. We will have volunteers checking the bin and bringing things inside um, or making runs to cross regularly so that the bin doesn't overflow. Um, I invite anyone to email me with questions about Back to the Basics or ideas for future outreach events and activities at christy.janigo at gmail.com. Thank you. Let's give Christy a hand of encouragement. She stepped into that role running, and um, 
Thanks be to God, she's going to keep us busy. So we'll have a table set up uh, by next Wednesday for our Wednesday Holden Prayer Service uh, in the back there. And you can bring your, your weekly offerings of um, items for Back to Basics. Um, yeah, it's Lent. Uh, Ash Wednesday started, and uh, this is the first Sunday in Lent. And Lent is a time when we focus on spiritual disciplines. Uh, fasting, praying, and giving alms. And you can give alms through uh, the types of items that Christy is challenging us to bring in to help our neighbors in need. You can also give through our special Lenten uh, match challenge. We've had a member uh, very generously donate uh, $15,000 to this purpose, dollar for dollar match, and that helps our budget meet its stretch giving goal. So, uh, take home one of these envelopes, or maybe you got one in the mail for our, we sent out letters to our members. Help us reach that goal during Lent as part of your uh, thank offering uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ during this season of Lent. All right, please rise uh, for our gathering song. Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrimage journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When my head is bowed in sorrow, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in reading responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. 
Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. A reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God wait, waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, who were saved through water, and baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and it is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, and it is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers. And the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace Dearly God. beloved, grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My name is Pastor Peter Samuelson. It's a joy to be with you again. This is now the third time I've preached with Maple Grove Lutheran Church in these COVID times. And I want to thank Pastor Nancy and Pastor Chris for this invitation. On Ash Wednesday, we began a journey together as a people, as a church, a journey toward the cross. It is a six, the six week journey of Lent where we will walk with Christ toward his betrayal, his death and his resurrection. We have come off the mountaintop experience where we saw Jesus transfigured in dazzling white and we saw the true nature of Jesus revealed to us. Jesus, God said from the mountaintop, is God's son, God's beloved. Listen to him. But life is not lived on the mountaintop where everything is dazzling and clear, where we can see where we're going and how to get there, where we get that bird's eye view of what lies ahead on our journey. No, life is lived on the, down the mountain, in the valley, where sometimes all we can see is a few steps ahead, where there is more darkness than light, and the way can be rocky and treacherous. 
The good news is Jesus goes with us on this journey. In fact, Jesus is leading this journey. We began, as I said, on Ash Wednesday, where we admitted that we were created by God from dust and to dust we shall return. And that without God in our lives, we are nothing. We are utterly dependent on God for our very life. And this is a good place to begin our Lenten journey. It will keep us close to Christ, who will lead us through the valley, lead us from death to life. We begin this journey where Mark begins his gospel with the baptism of Jesus. We are just nine verses in, just after a brief introduction of John the baptizer. And Jesus appears from Nazareth of Galilee to be baptized by John. And Mark reports, just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. These words should sound a bit familiar. We heard them just last week when they were spoken by God on the mountaintop during the transfiguration of Jesus. Just one little difference. Here God proclaims that God is pleased with Jesus. God's son on the mountaintop, we are instructed, however, to listen to him. And there is another significant difference. In this story, the heavens are torn apart and the spirit comes down on Jesus in the form of a dove. This means that God is now present on earth in the person of Jesus. God's spirit has come down from the heavens and now rests on this person, this man, Jesus Christ. It is this spirit then, God's spirit, that drives Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days. This word drive is kind of curious. It's forceful. It's almost like Jesus is compelled to go into the wilderness against his will. And he certainly doesn't seem to want to choose this path, but is driven to it. For the wilderness is a place of danger, of barrenness, of God forsakenness. The Bible uses the wilderness as a symbol for that place or even that time in a person's life where God is nowhere to be found. Mark reports, he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now Mark's gospel is the shortest of all the gospels and thought to be the first, the one Matthew and Luke used as the basis for their gospel. Mark is also straight to the point. He does not give any detail on Jesus' backstory like Matthew and Luke do, no genealogy, no birth story, no stories of Jesus as a youth in the temple, just the bare facts. Maybe some of you remember a cop show back in the 1960s called Dragnet. This show is so old, it was shot in black and white on television. One of the officers in that show, Sergeant Joe Friday, when interviewing a witness to a crime, and that witness was going on and on about something that wasn't relevant to the case, he would say, just the facts, ma'am. I feel like that is an apt description of Mark, just giving us the facts. For when he describes Jesus' wilderness experience, he reports only three things. First, Jesus was tempted by Satan. Second, he was with the wild beasts. And third, the angels waited on him. Now, Matthew and Luke report way more detail how Satan appeared and commanded Jesus to turn stone into bread or to throw himself off the pinnacle of the temple and God would send angels to protect him or how Jesus should worship Satan and he would give Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. None of that is here, just the presence of Satan, the wild beasts and the angels. As I said in the beginning, we are on a journey together in this season of Lent, a journey begun on Ash Wednesday with our confession that we are nothing without God. We are on a journey with Jesus to the cross. This journey begins for us as it began for Jesus with our baptism. 
where we were joined to Christ in a death like his, so that we can be raised with Christ in a resurrection like his. Ash Wednesday also reminds us as we, we receive the Holy Spirit and marked with the ashes on our forehead with a cross, that in our baptism, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And that just as Jesus received the Holy Spirit and God proclaimed his love and pleasure in Jesus, so have we also received God's spirit and love. And we are also called beloved by God. And so just as Jesus is driven into the wilderness, we have also experienced this place in our lives on our journey. This may be a particular time of wilderness for many of us, or perhaps even all of us. A deadly pandemic is loose in our land, indeed in all the world, causing death and fear and danger all around. It has forced us into isolation caused us to be separate from each other and from our loved ones, and introduced an element of risk to even gather with those we love. This is what the wilderness is, where we are isolated and at risk, vulnerable to temptation, especially the temptation of despair and hopelessness. But while our experience in the wilderness is real, there is another reality just as powerful. That is, Jesus is with us. Indeed, if we are on this journey together with Jesus and Jesus leads the way, then what Jesus has is ours as well. So while we may be tempted to despair and the wild beast of a virus is all around us, the holy angels are also there with us along with the presence of Jesus. We belong to Jesus. We were marked with the cross of Christ forever. And as Jesus says in the Gospel of John, no one, no thing will snatch us away from his hand. We are in his care forever. Jesus leaves the wilderness then to proclaim, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Ash Wednesday marked our repentance. The repentance made real in our baptism, and now we are ready to believe. Believe in the good news that the kingdom of God is near. And what is this good news? It is what Mark proclaims from the beginning of his gospel, the very first words, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The good news is, God is near to us in Jesus. God is here. God has joined us to Jesus in our baptism and his journey is ours. We will leave our baptism where we too receive God's spirit. We will journey through the wilderness, overcome our temptation to despair and survive the wild beasts. And we will live our lives as a witness to God's kingdom through deeds of love and mercy and healing and die in Christ only to be raised to new life in him. This is our journey and it is just beginning. The good news is we are following Jesus on it to the cross and through the cross to his resurrection. May the holy angels be with you on your way through the wilderness to new life. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the Earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, climatologists, scientists, and advocacy groups working for restoration and healing of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world to work for safe and just communities, especially for the lowly. Strengthen our congregation's ministries of care and concern for neighbors in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those who live, whose lives feel desolate. Be with those imprisoned, with the homeless, and those who are downcast and despairing. Give your presence, your hope, and your strength to all who feel alone. We pray for the people of Texas and the st southern states affected by the winter storm, left without power, heat, and water. Send aid and deliver those in danger. Grant healing and peace to Sharon File, Sharon Anderson's nephew, Ron McElmurray, Shelley Halverson, Elizabeth Crow, Jack Weber's son, Mark, Shelley Rainier's mother-in-law, Lois, and those who we name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, so, my soul, are you weary and troubled? In the night so dark that our eyes cannot see, there's light so bright as we look to our Savior. Life more abundant and free. Life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh God, our God, you are with us in darkness. Your word, your light is leading us on. Our hearts can hear you, Heavenly Father, calling us all to your Son. Calling us all to your Son. You say, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. In the light of his glory and grace. We turn our eyes to you, beholding all your beauty. You are holy. We turn our eyes to you, beholding all your beauty. You are holy. We turn our eyes to 
Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace and we turn our eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace in the light of his glory and grace in the light of his glory Before we begin the celebration of Holy Communion, we have guests and visitors today, and we are so glad you are with us. Ushers, I want to make sure that everyone has, their, has the individual communion servings, which is the way that we have adapted to the pandemic and receiving uh, communion in worship, as well as at home. And so if uh, you need an individual communion serving. Will you raise your hand at this time? And ushers, could you please take some from uh, the entryway? And we'll just wait a minute for that. We also have consecrated individual communion servings for folks who are worshiping with us online. And you can stop by uh, during office hours each week to pick some up. Or if you need us to bring them, we deliver. All right, thank you, Scott. Please rise as we continue now with our celebration of the Thanksgiving at the table. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert pouring out his life for the world. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsting world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. It's through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Jesus draws the whole world to himself in this meal. Come and be fed. You may be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. At this time, worshipers present and online may consume your wafer and wine in your individual servings. United at the table, all our joy is joined in song. United in the faith, all our joy to God belongs. We will praise God, we will feast at the bountiful table of life and grace. We will praise God and give thanks for communion with every race. United at the table, all our God, we will play with rhythm and instruments. We will praise God for the love that invites all creation to dance. United at the table, all our joy is joined in song. United in the faith, all our Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are what God made you to be created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. out 
to show them who you are. So living water flowing through, God we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire. Just to Shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.